we looked at a bunch of ideas yesterday, and the reason why we're doing a topic review now, even though it's like, what? Only <laughs> two lessons in, is because data and statistics, I feel, this is just my, my personal sort of vibe from the subject, from the topic, is that more than any other of the parts of the course, the strands of the course you've done, it seems to be kind of like a random mismatch of ideas. Like, what do any of these have to do with each other? And you can kind of fall into the trap of learning them and going through all of them and understanding them, but not getting the fact that they're all connected in these very, very fundamental ways. So yesterday we focused on three main ideas, and they all center around the idea of questions. Now, can anyone remind me, or can anyone remember, around questions, what kinds of things did we learn about the kinds of questions you would pose in a survey under data and statistics. We asked three simple questions about questions. Anyone? Anyone? Are we satisfied? Yeah, Laura? So we had open-ended questions. Okay, so we, we looked at different kinds of questions, right? Lots and lots of different kinds. So we said, I'm going to put it here. Uh, we said, what kinds of things can you ask? What kinds of things can you ask? So we looked at all the different categories of questions. I wish there were many different kinds, okay? What else did we talk about with regard to questions? Not just what? Uh, who do you ask? Ah, good. Um, yeah, we did in the second period, we talked about the people, right? So we talked about who you're going to ask and the problems of trying to get an accurate data set. We'll come back to that in a minute. There was one more thing. <laughs> yeah, very good. So in terms of like once you have your questions, you know who you want to ask, the way you convey those questions, there's lots of different options, right? And they tend to be kind of... Um, sort of grouped into, or rather ordered, in terms of like cost and practicality, okay? Now, just to drill into these ideas a little further, under this idea of what, based on the kinds of questions you ask on a survey, you will get different kinds of data out of that. And you might recall, we drew a funky looking tree diagram that looks something like this. There we go. Now, we don't have to rehearse the whole thing, but just so that we can refresh our memory, there were two main categories of types of data that you would get out of different kinds of surveys. Does anyone remember what they were? Okay, very good. Categor categorical, which is basically, you know, words. And also, quantitative, quantitative which was basically numbers, right? Then within categorical and quantitative, again, we had more subcategories. So, someone want to tell me? Um, yeah, very good. So nominal is just when it's, you've got words, right? And there's no order to them whatsoever, like eye colour. Um, versus ordinal, where it's like the quality of a book. You know, it's like it's poor, decent, quite good, brand new. And you can put them on a scale, right? Say it again. So nominal, ordinal. Those people who were here yesterday don't need to copy any of this down because you have the proper tree diagram. I just want to refresh your memory. So we don't need to do this? Um, well, I'm just trying to remind you of, like I said about this thing, like, I think this is just enough of a cue that you can remember what the bits are. Okay, you should have this tree. You should already have this tree. Um, under quantitative, under numbers. Okay, yeah, good. It's the kind of numbers you're dealing with. So if you've got like a count of some type, like you're counting the number of people, the number of siblings, or the number of whiteboard markers, those are separate numbers, right? So we call them discrete quantitative. Alternatively, if you're measuring something, counting versus measuring, we call that continuous data. So if you measure a weight, or you measure a height, or you measure uh, anything, basically, it can be on a range, right? So we had continuous data under that kind of idea. Okay, very good. So the, the pieces of feed you get. Now, let's come back to this who question, because we spent a while on this. We said, ideally, obviously, if you want to get data, you want to get all the data. You want to get a complete set. You want to ask absolutely everyone that your questions are related to. And um, what's that called? The group of people who ev it's everyone that your questions are related to. Census. It's a. Uh, it has two words in it. Who are the people? It's the. I think I heard it. The target population, right? Now, if you get the entire target population, right? You ask questions to all of them. Then we call that a. Census, right? But if you only have like a part of the target population, then we call that a sample. Okay. And more often than not, this is what we resort to because it's really hard to do a census, um, which is why we only do one every five years. Okay, so now you have all these pieces together, and you'll be able to understand what we're looking at today. Three ideas, and they all fit 
under here because there are samples and then there are samples. So the three kinds of samples we're going to look at today are in the, the scheme of the rest of this diagram, I'm going to give you the acronyms for them and then we'll explore them one at a time. Um, and RS and SRS and uh, SS. Not, not airbags. You'll, you'll hear what SRS are in a bit. I had to go find out what SRS stood for actually. It stands for Supplemental Restraint System. As in what happens when your seatbelts aren't enough. 